Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is the second lecture on Ramsey theory. Uh, tonight we are going to be doing finite Ramsey's theorem and Ramsey's theorem for our sets. So this is what it's uh, what the lecture is going to be about. Uh, these are a few refinements and generalizations on the Ramsey's theorem we did last time. So, without further ado. Uh, oh yes, uh, last time I didn't show you a picture of Ramsey, and I think he looks quite nice, so I decided to include a picture of him. So he's the man who started uh, all this uh, theory, and whose legacy lives on to this day. Okay, so this is just a quick recap. Uh, last time we proved Ramsey's theorem, which says the following. If we have uh, an arbitrary two-coloring uh, of the second layer of n, call it C, then there exists an infinite monochromatic subset of n, i.e. an infinite subset of n, call it M, such that C is constant on the second layer of M. Okay? And remember, uh, layers are just, uh, we define the layer of a set to just be all the subsets of that set of a given size. So in this case, it would be all the pairs of the natural numbers. Uh, yes, I don't think we need to dwell, dwell on this any longer. If you're unsure about anything, check out the first lecture and then return. Okay, uh, first I'm going to give you uh, a simple yet a very intriguing consequence of Ramsey's theorem. We uh, directly come uh, onto some useful things from the theory. So what are we going to, what's the example going to be? So, okay, now... That's a remark. <laughs> okay, so what's the example going to be? So first, let's start off with uh, a sequence of real numbers. Okay, so there's no constraint really on these numbers. There's, it's just a sequence of real numbers. And now consider the natural numbers like so. And now, let's associate each natural number to uh, the corresponding element of the sequence. Okay, uh, this is three, this is x3, and so on. Okay, and now let us think of a coloring on the natural numbers that suits this uh, oh, oh! I haven't said <laughs> what what we're gonna say about the sequence. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna basically prove that uh, every real sequence has a monotone monotone sub sequence. Okay, and we're gonna prove this by using Ramsey's theorem. And it's extremely easy. So just we just do the following. So we color ij, the edge ij, uh, up if xi uh, is smaller or equal to xj. We color it down if xi is bigger than xj. Okay, and remember what a monotone uh, sequence is. It means a sequence of numbers which is non-increasing or non-decreasing. So the picture to have in mind would be something, a sequence going like this, perhaps that's a non-decreasing sequence or one going this way. Okay, and of course, an arbitrary sequence can go all over the place and can go mad. So we're starting off with that. And 
and then we color uh, the edges between each two points up or down so this would be up this would be down okay this would be down and by Ramsey's theorem by Ramsey we get that there exists an infinite uh, an infinite subsequence an infinite subsequence such that x and j uh, and j well is uh, j is monotone okay so this is a fairly standard result uh, in analysis but it's much harder to prove with standard analytic methods you know and your beginners analysis or maybe even honors I don't know uh, but this uh, Ramsey's theorem really simplifies the proof we just get it straight away it falls out almost you know without any effort so this is a good sign we're onto something good here the theory seems to be quite good okay now I'm gonna make a remark considering the strength of different statements so in Ramsey's theorem we can find an infinite monochromatic subset but what if Ramsey's theorem said uh, that we could find arbitrarily large finite monochromatic sets would that imply that we could then find an infinite monochromatic set well consider this example consider this example okay these are again the naturals the naturals I'm I'm making space here as you can see because these are between these sort of islands because these guys are gonna be my color islands and by that I mean every edge inside one of these islands is gonna be blue every edge here is gonna be blue every edge here is blue and so on and uh, we repeat the pattern you know indefinitely and every edge connecting these various islands is going to be red is going to be red so consider this setup okay and as we can see here we have arbitrarily arbitrarily large finite monochromatic sets i.e. the blue islands so this one is of size 1 size 2 size 3 and so on and we have arbitrarily large but there is no infinite blue monochromatic subset so this is kind of telling us something this is telling us that this this statement are arbitrarily this should be uh, arbitrarily large finite monochromatic sets do not imply the existence of infinite monochromatic subset because uh, in this setup there's no infinite blue monochromatic subset because if we you know connect one point from one island to uh, a point in some other island we we have to connect it by a red edge so there's no infinite monochromatic blue subset of course there is a red one but that's the that's the result of Ramsey's theorem so this is a this is a kind of a subtlety to keep in mind because uh, we're gonna I'm gonna mention it again once we prove finite Ramsey's theorem and this lecture okay 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 and I'm gonna do a brief uh, I'm briefly gonna mention what uh, R sets are so uh, basically an R set uh, uh, I'm gonna call so let's you know n the, let n be the natural numbers and I'm gonna call uh, a subset of n an R set if uh, a has size R so this is uh, this is what I'm gonna be talking about when I'm talking about R sets so this is a, these are gonna be subsets of the natural numbers uh, with a certain uh, specific size R okay 
and we can now ask ourselves what if we have an arbitrary coloring of the rth layer of the natural numbers okay in Ramsey's theorem we have a uh, an arbitrary coloring of the second layer. Uh, to remind you, layers are all the subsets of n of size r. So this is uh, the rth layer. The we had the, in Ramsey's theorem, we we're talking about the second layer, i.e., all the pairs of natural numbers. What if we had a coloring of uh, the rth layer? Uh, is it then true uh, that there exists a monochromatic subset of n? Okay, that's the question we're going to ask. Uh, it's not exactly obvious, it's not exactly obvious, but we do think it's kind of true because uh, what's the what's really the difference between coloring uh, uh, pairs and co coloring triples or something like that? What's what's really the difference? I, you know, there's not much difference. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just give a short example. Uh, and uh, I'm going to give a short example of a, of a coloring and a monochromatic infinite subset. So I'm going to be writing down triplets of natural numbers with ijk, uh, where of course uh, i is going to be less than j, and this is going to be less than k. Okay, and we're going to have the following example. So we're going to be coloring n three okay and uh, color i j k red if i divides j plus k and color it blue otherwise okay and now uh, Take a moment, pause the video, and think, and see if you can think of the example on your own. There's, you know, a bunch of examples. See if you can think of one. Okay, and the example I'm gonna give is just, you know, take a prime number, take a prime number, any prime number, and just take all the powers of that prime number. Okay. So then. If you have that, we can see that pi divides pj plus pk, uh, where of course this holds, uh, this holds, and thus we can see that all triples here are going to be colored red. And this is an infinite. Monochromatic. Uh, this is actually a family of infinite monochromatic sets because you can take any, any, uh, uh, you can take any prime number, and if you dare, uh, you can take any combination of prime numbers and their powers. That's you know it works the same. You can play around a lot with this this example actually. Okay. Uh, now we are going to prove Ramsey's theorem for R sets. So let's just state it. Uh, we have that R is a natural number. C is an arbitrary two coloring of the n the rth layer of the natural numbers. Then there exists an infinite monochromatic subset of the natural numbers, i.e., an infinite set M. Uh, a subset of the natural numbers such that C is constant on the uh, rth layer of M. Okay, uh, read this through and I hope everything's clear. All the mathematical language is clear. And now we are gonna prove this. And the proof is gonna be very similar to that of Ramsey's, Ramsey's theorem. Uh, actually, you can pause the video and try it on your own. Uh, don't try it for too long, but there is a very natural way of extending Ramsey's theorem to Ramsey's theorem for R sets. Uh, it, you know, if you're, if you have a knack for it, maybe you'll get it on your own. 
but okay I'm gonna show it now so first we're gonna the first thing I'm gonna say is that we're gonna do this by inducting and we are gonna induct on R okay induct on R and first we're gonna see the base case we are going to see the base case so what happens when R is 1 well in that case we're actually just talking about the natural numbers themselves if we color the natural numbers can we then find an infinite uh, monochromatic subset well of course we can and this is by the pigeonhole principle so that's you can take this as your base case and if you want to be a bit cheeky you know and show off you can go at r2 and take ramsey's theorem as your base case the one we proved in the previous lecture okay so we have our base case now let's move on to the induction step so suppose suppose the statement holds for r minus 1 and our goal now is to show that it holds for r as well so let's take an arbitrary coloring of let's take an arbitrary coloring of an r okay and we're going to do a, a bit of a visualization here uh it's kind of hard to draw uh you know quadruples and quintets so i'm going to do you know r can be arbitrarily big but i'm going to uh, i'm going to draw this as if r were three because it's it's just easier to do uh we take a coloring yeah okay and we're gonna start in the same way uh we did for ramsey's theorem we're just gonna start somewhere we're gonna pick an element of the natural numbers we're gonna pick an element of the natural numbers this guy right here and this is going to be this is going to be the rest of the natural numbers it's just and without this guy and this guy is going to be here so what are we to do what are we to do we have an r coloring uh, we have a, uh, a a two coloring of r sets we have a two coloring of r sets uh, can we somehow bring it down to r minus one sets and the answer is yes we can induce a coloring on the set uh, of the natural numbers minus a1 in the following way so we have these two guys and uh, and these a1 together with these points has a color this has some sort of color so we are going to assign this color to the edge between these two guys and we're going to do that for every uh r minus one set which is an r set together with a1 and and this set okay so now let's just uh write this down uh induce and r minus one and r minus one coloring on this set uh, in the following way okay so let's call the coloring d so d is going to be going from uh, this uh, this shouldn't be a capital A it should be a small a from a1 okay and 
let's call the coloring uh, go, goes from this set the r minus one layer of this set to one two okay and it's defined very simply so f is an r minus one set the color of it is just the color of f union a1 f union a1 and lo and behold we have an r minus r minus one coloring and what can we do now we can use our induction hypothesis so what does this mean this means that there exists a big old infinite monochromatic set b1 inside inside of uh, n minus a1 okay and every r minus one uh, set together with a1 is going to have the same color uh, the same color every r minus one set in b1 together with a1 is going to have the same color and now we just repeat the process just like in the proof of Ramsey's theorem so we pick an a2 in uh, b1 okay uh, induce Okay, we're gonna call this D1, I guess. Induce the coloring D2 going from B1 uh, minus A2. So, uh, you know, A2 uh, here going from uh, all the r minus one sets uh, to one two. We induce it in exactly the same way, you know, but with a two, and uh, we then have uh, an infinite monochromatic set B two. So okay, and we just Ta -ta 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 -ta. continue inductively okay and of course uh, I'm gonna say uh, that the color of uh, so this is an infinite b1 is an infinite monochromatic uh, uh, subset uh, of n and the color we associate uh, with b1 i'm gonna call c1 okay okay and so now we have a sequence of now we've constructed a sequence of natural numbers such that uh, such that the color this is just going to be the general the color of a i union f where uh, f is just uh, uh, an r minus one set of uh, numbers that come after AI is going to be CI. Okay, so this is the general thing. So that would mean uh, general color of A1 union F is C1. General of A2 union F is c2 and so on and again as in ramsey's theorem we just choose uh, a monochromatic su monochromatic subsequence of this sequence so it's c1 whatever okay so there exists an a subsequence and j 
j bigger than 1 such that c and i equals to c oh, c and 1 equals to c and 2 equals to c and 3 and so forth then if we have a look at this set uh, a and 1 a and 2 and so on uh, we'll realize that we are done. So take an R set, take an R set uh, uh, out of M. So this is going to look something like A N uh, I, and then uh, a bunch of elements that come after. So this is the minimum of this R set, and the color of this guy is just going to be. C and I, which is uh, this color, and if you take any other R set, A and J, the color of that, uh, the color of that is going to be C and J, and they are going to be equal. So, uh, we have now found an infinite monochromatic uh, subset of the natural numbers. And this finishes the proof for Ramsey's theorem for R sets. Okay. I hope you got all of that. The main thing about this proof is that we uh, use our induction hypothesis use our induction hypothesis uh, so that when we induce an R minus one coloring uh, and in this manner, we can then use the induction hypothesis to conclude that there is an infinite monochromatic uh, subset. So that's, that's the idea. And then we just continue as we did in the proof of Ramsey's theorem uh, and we, basically arrive at the conclusion just following our nose. Okay. Okay, and I will now give an example of usefulness uh, for this version of Ramsey's theorem. So, first I'm going to say with a piecewise linear function induced by a sequence in R2 is. So consider a sequence like this in R2, okay? Consider this sequence in R2, uh, where this is just a sequence in R. Okay. Uh, let's draw this. Oh, sorry, this should be a two. So one, two, three, and so on. So let's let's just draw this. So at one we have x one somewhere. Uh, then at two we have x two somewhere. Then at three we have x three and uh, x at 4 we have x4 here let's say and if we connect these points by straight lines we end up with a function okay uh, and this is a this is going to be a piecewise uh, piece piecewise linear function let's linear because these are straight lines function induced by this sequence in R2 okay so this is how we can induce a function from this from such a sequence okay uh, mm -hmm. 
Our claim is that given any sequence of this form in R2, we can induce, uh, we can uh, uh, pick a subsequence such that the induced piecewise linear function is uh, either convex or concave. So I, I assume you're familiar with the concepts of con convexivity and conca concavity. Uh, basically, a function is convex if it's like this, and a function is concave if it's like this. So if you uh, connect any two points, uh, you know, on the graph of the function, then uh, if it's concave, if it's convex, everything will be below the line. Uh, in between those two points, and if it's concave, everything will be above, okay? And it's very simple to show this. We are going to be coloring triplets, okay? We're going to be coloring triplets in N3. So color, actually, why don't you try it on your own? Why don't you try to use the Ramsey's theorem for R sets on your own to show this and, you know, pause the video and then uh, if you come back and see see how I've done it. So color IJK uh, con color it convex if we have the following situation, so we have XI and XJ here and uh, sorry this is x k and x j here so if we have this situation so uh, uh, on the graph of the on the graph here uh, when we draw these points in the in the plane in the real plane uh, if we have this situation and we color it concave if we have the reverse situation, so xj is, and you may be wondering, well, it's not necessarily the case that uh, xi and xk uh, are uh, going to be equal to each other, so when you, you know, so that you can connect them with a straight line, well, not a straight, but a line parallel to the x-axis. Well, no, that's not what I mean by this, I just mean whenever you have uh, these two points, it can be like this, for example. So the line, you just connect them by a line and the point XJ must be below the line. That's what I mean with this. That's what I mean with this, okay? And by Ramsey for R sets, there exists, uh, subsequence, i.e. an infinite monochromatic set, such that the piecewise linear function induced by this subsequence of this sequence is con either convex or concave. concave. We don't know. But uh, it's one of those. And this is a, it's a nice result. <laughs> I mean, it's not obvious how to prove this, uh, really not obvious how to prove this uh, analytically. I think you'd, you'd have to be kind of smart about it. And it just falls out with Ramsey theory, which is uh, wonderful. <laughs> okay. Let's see what we have next. Finite Ramsey. Okay, so this is 
I think this is basically why everybody came here who ever heard of uh, Ramsey theory because finite Ramsey's theorem actually concerns uh, Ramsey numbers. And I am going to do, I'm, I'm going to be doing a lecture on Ramsey numbers, but it's going to be, I'm going to actually do it after the third lecture, but it's not uh, going to be kind of part of this course. It's just going to be sort of an appendix or uh, an additional piece of content because I know people love and enjoy Ramsey numbers. So I'm going to be showing you know, the simplest cases and the simple case. And then I'm going to be showing some asymptotic bounds, uh, lower and upper bounds uh, for uh, the Ramsey numbers. In particular, I'm going to be showing the best lower bound possible. Well, not possible, but the current record for the lower bound. And I'm going to be showing a very poor <laughs> upper bound because the upper bounds are much harder, but I am going to provide you with some resources on the upper bounds. Uh, I might even show one kind of uh, moderately strong upper bound, bound but uh, we'll see about that. Okay, so finite Ramsey's theorem. We have, we pick two, uh, two natural numbers, M and R, and the claim is that then uh, there exists an N, a natural number, such that whenever uh, the rth layer of the uh, set 1 up to n is two colored uh, there exists a monochromatic m set inside m so basically a subset of uh, the set 1 up to n which is of size m such that the rth layer uh, such that the rth layer of that set so let me just quickly write this down so this M set is going to be this. It's going to have size a small m. And it is going to be the, uh, the case that uh, C restricted to M uh, R is going to be constant. It's going to be constant. It's going to be either one or two, but it's not going to be both. It's going to be one of them. It's going to be constant. OK, so basically this is kind of the same, but then again, it's not. So uh, what do we have? We have, uh, we have for the rth layer of the natural numbers, we can find an infinite one, but we can find an infinite one, but then we ask for, we don't ask for an infinite subset, we ask monochromatic subset, we ask for a finite but arbitrarily large monochromatic subset. So we don't need, uh, this is, this theorem basically says that we don't need all the natural numbers, we can cut them off at some point, we can cut them off and just look at the natural numbers before that and this set, uh, this layer, and we will be able to find uh, the size of the monochromatic set we want. Okay, so yeah, this is actually quite not, not that easy to show. You'd think it would be it would fall like in a few lines, but it actually takes some cleverness. Uh, this proof is going to be quite similar to the proof of the Bolzano Weierstrass theorem, if you know about it, and that may be surprising, but I think it'll gonna it's gonna be natural for you once you see the route we're gonna take with this proof. Okay, and we're going to do this by contradiction. So have a look at the statement. So what's the what's the uh, you know the negative of this statement? Uh, what's the negative of this statement? Have a good look. Okay, because you know. I'm... Okay, we are going to do this proof by contradiction. So suppose 
the statement is false. Suppose it's false. So suppose not. So what's the negative of the statement? That means that there exists M and R and natural numbers such that for all such that uh, such that for all n bigger than r uh, there exists uh, coloring cn of Uh, with no with no monochromatic M sets. Okay. So for each N we have a two coloring of uh, n to the r, n r with no monochromatic m sets. So these colorings are all distinct. So what would be great is if we could somehow combine these colorings, combine this co these colorings into a coloring of the rth layer of the natural numbers. Okay. Uh, so that this coloring inherits the property that there are no monochromatic M sets for it. And because then th uh, that fact would exactly contradict the, the statement of Ramsey's theorem on R sets, and then we would have a beautiful contradiction because this uh, so a coloring induce, induced by these colorings, uh, such that this coloring still has the property that there are no monochromatic M sets. But uh, with Ramsey's theorem on R sets, we know uh, the theorem guarantees that there is an infinite monochromatic. Uh, subset. So that would be a massive, massive contradiction. Not only because it, because this this one says there's no monochromatic M sets, and we would contradict uh, the existence of an infinite uh, infinite monochromatic set. So that's that's our goal to somehow combine these guys into such a coloring. And you might think this is quite easy. You might think this is easy if we just do the following. If we just do the following. So define this coloring just where A is an R set of the natural numbers to just be, you know, taken in uh, and large enough. So max of A is enough uh, of A. So you just think, you'd think this would be fine. But the problem is, the problem is, the colorings are not nested, and because of that, they the this coloring would then not conserve the property that there are no monochromatic M sets, and by not nested, I mean that uh, I mean that uh, C, uh, I don't know, C K, when given a when given an R set, might be different than C L when given the same R set because this 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 doesn't say uh, that the colorings agree on sets. This is just just says that for every n there exists some coloring such that this guy has no monochromatic M sets. So maybe C K and C L disagree, and with that with without them being nested 
when we extend these colorings to a coloring of the whole uh, of, of all the natural numbers, we lose the property uh, of there being no monochromatic M sets. So this is the problem. So this is a problem, and this is what we're going to solve. So basically, this is the key idea of the proof. We just got to somehow uh, get these colorings to be nested. OK, and now I'm going to write a simple truth here. Uh, I'm going to write a simple truth here. There are only finitely many ways to color this, the rth layer of the set uh, 1 up to r. OK. And what does this mean? What does this mean? This means that then infinitely many CNs agree on it. So infinitely many color rings agree on uh, which color. Uh, so there are only finitely many ways to color this layer. OK. And infinitely many CNs then agree on it because, uh, well, there's infinitely many colorings and then only finitely many ways to color it. So there mu it must be the case that infinitely many colorings agree on it. Uh, and then we take all those colorings and uh, uh, we we take all those co colorings in such a way that and we define uh, and we define a new coloring we define a new coloring so we are going to define dr to be the coloring it's going to be a coloring of R, 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 <laughs> R, R, R. It's going to be the coloring of R, R. OK, and it's going to be DR. It's going to be defined as CN restricted to uh, R, R for all n uh, elements of A1. And A1 is the set of all n's such that the CNs agree uh, on the coloring of this. OK, that's going to be A1. OK, so infinitely many guys agree Infinitely many colorings, colorings agree uh, on how to color uh, this this set. Okay, and then we we then also uh, we then also see that there there's finitely many ways to color. R plus one R and infinitely many CNs from A one agree on it. So we define again a new coloring of a new coloring of this we define it and so it goes blah 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 we define it in such a way all the cns uh, 
uh, all the CNs uh, restricted to R plus one R element A. Uh, okay. For all n element A two, and A two is all the ends such that the CNs agree on this set, and then from the and then from that from A one we then pick all the CNs which agree on this set. Okay, and then we get uh, a set of ends A two. And and see see what has happened here. Both dr and dr plus one agree on every r set uh, there is, every r set in their domain. So this is good. We've created, we've started creating a nested sequence of colorings, and we just continue this process. Continue this process inductively. We continue this process inductively. And what we arrive at is a sequence of colorings. The R, well, let's call it the N. Well, N is bigger than R, which are nested. Okay. Which are nested. And this brings us back to the beginning. Now we can define a coloring of the the rth layer of the natural numbers, like in the following way. So uh, d of some r set is just going to be uh, d max a a, okay. And since every one of these guys has the property. Uh, that there are no monochromatic M sets, it is going to be the case that D has the property that there are no monochromatic M sets uh, in the whole of in the whole of the natural numbers, and this contradicts contradicts Ramsey's theorem on R sets contradict it heavily because Ramsey's theorem on R set says that says there's an infinite monochromatic there's an infinite monochromatic subset. Okay, and this is the this is then the end of the proof. Um, yes. Oh, and uh, yes, so this is a remark I'll make. So we, we took the infinite version and we proved and the, we saw that the infinite version implied the finite one. Uh, well, basically, we proved the contraposition that if we suppose that the finite version doesn't hold, then, uh, then the infinite version doesn't hold. This is what we proved, basically. Uh, a moment ago, so that means that the infinite version implies the finite one, and that is strange because in mathematics it is often the case that the finite versions with arbitrarily large numbers easily imply the infinite cases, and this goes back to the remark uh, I had at the beginning of this lecture, uh, the one with the color islands with the one with the color islands. So there we saw that the finite version did not imply the infinite one, but but the infinite version implies the finite one. And this is somewhat strange. Somewhat strange as as these finite statements but with arbitrarily large arbitrarily large uh, are often very very powerful and these are the statements that you often want to get your hands on uh, but here it is the opposite here the infinite version is actually more powerful so go all the way infinity all the way to infinity and beyond 
Okay. And I think we are done for this lecture. So the last thing I'm going to say, thank you guys for watching. I hope that was clear. I know the proof for uh, the finite Ramsey theorem proof can be a bit, you know, can be a bit convoluted, but uh, it's uh, it's not that hard once you once you grasp the uh, once you grasp the concepts of the proof. So smash that like button, as everybody here on YouTube says. Fucking subscribe! No, no, not f and subscribe. F and subscribe. And please uh, uh, write feedback about the lecture in the comments. Any aspect of the lecture you want improved, anything you thought was good, anything you thought was horrible, maybe you have a problem with the pacings of the lecture. Maybe I should be faster, zooming through all the through all the mathematics, or maybe I should slow down. You know, take a easy, leisurely pace. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. And uh, yes, thank you all for watching and I see, I'll see you in lecture three when we are going to be doing the canonical Ramsey theorem. Yes, so this is the mother, the mother of all Ramsey theorems. Uh, and after that, we're going to begin with interesting things. We're uh, we're gonna be adding we're gonna begin adding structure to the natural numbers. Now we're just looking at colorings, but we're gonna be look but then we're gonna be looking at things like addition uh, and those sort of things. We're gonna add the additive structure to the natural numbers and see if we can deduce anything from that. And and that's gonna be quite fun. That's gonna be quite fun. I I quite lo I love those proofs. I, I enjoyed him so much, yeah, so much, baby. Uh, yes, <laughs> thank you for watching. Mm.